Hello everyone, it's me again, Ricky, Astronome. Uh, I just wanted to put out a quick video today, because uh, I'm going to an RTT tomorrow, uh, and I'm hoping to make a, a longer video talking about um, that when I'm back from that, but it has been a while, I've been slacking, uh, so we're just getting back on the horse here to make a video. Um, I've still been mostly thinking about Slaves to Darkness recently and practicing with them a little bit. Um, so today I'm just going to talk about the list that I'm bringing and some thoughts behind it, and then talk about the one practice game that I've gotten with it. Um, I've gotten one or two practice games against Slaves as well, um, against my friend Roger. Um, so lots of Slave thinking lately, Slaves to Darkness thinking lately. Um, so yeah, the list, um, this is very slightly different from what I played in the game I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm taking no magic, so uh, this is heresy because obviously demonic power from the Sorcerer Lord is one of the best things in the book. You can put everything on twos and twos basically instead of threes and threes, which is great. Um, but there's a there's a new uh, there's a new tactic for um, armies that don't have any magic. If you have a nullstone artifact, um, and I'd been kind of trending in that direction anyway with my lists, and so I'm just gonna gonna keep trying this out a little bit. Um, in terms of cha yeah, in terms of changes from the um, the battle scroll, uh, not much changed for slaves. Um, but I already had a demon prince in this list, so getting two more attacks on the axe is just gravy. That's awesome, um, and I think definitely. I, I think that's enough to move this, the Demon Prince into just, like, totally legit thing to take territory. I don't think it's auto-include or anything. Um, but I think at 150 points, that's enough of a, a buff that, with all of the other tools it brings to the table, um, I think it's just totally legit at 150 points. The biggest problem to me with the Demon Prince has always been that um, it's 10 wounds, so it doesn't fit that well into battalions if you want to take multiple, like into, spo into spoilers. I think that's the thing that just absolutely kills the despoiler subfaction, is you can't get to low drops because you can't fit demon princes <laughs> into into regiments, um, battle regiments. Um, but yeah, and then the the extra tactic is, like I said, is just good. So, so two very minor buffs for this list. Uh, the list is in host of the Ever Chosen, um, because the rally and the extra banner are both awesome. Um, I do think the Demon Prince now is even better in Kabbalists, where you can take flaming weapons. Um, I'm not the first to note that. I'm not a genius by any means. Um, it's pretty obvious that having more attacks and being able to throw flaming weapons on it is great. Um, but yeah, and then... Uh, being no magic, I can take Slaughter of Sorcery, which is nice. Again, I... I just kind of want to be a little brain dead lately, and by lately I mean the last like five months at this point, I guess. Uh, three months. Last three months. Since World Champs. Um, too much cruel voice thinking. Um, so yeah, against another army, like Corn or something, this might just be an auto for both of us if we're both taking it. Um, and then I think I can get to things and kill their wizards. Um, I have two characters. I'm a two drop. So this is in two battle regiments. Um, so I have a Karkadrak with Slanesh and the Conqueror's Crown. The difference here, um, this is the this is the difference between what I took against Nick in the game I'm going to talk about and what I'm taking tomorrow to the tournament, uh, is that I had the um, Helm of the Despoiler, the, the the one that means you can't do rally and um, inspiring presence within six inches of the the character, um, and I swapped that out for Conqueror's Crown just because I feel like the Karkadrek can often end up kind of off on his own, like fighting a little chaff and things, and turning off Inspiring Presence is great, but you don't need to turn off Inspiring Presence if you can just make them not count on the point anyway. So I think in my head Conqueror's Crown wins out just a little bit. Um, I have been traumatized by like four up rallies and things in the past, which makes Hell of the Oppressor awesome. Um, but I'm going with Conqueror's Crown for tomorrow. Um, this, playing this RTT is is largely practice for a grand tournament that's coming up in March, uh, so we're going to see how it goes. Uh, so then I have the Demon Prince. This is the general. 
with Bolstered by Chaos to make him a monster and give him plus two wounds. So he's 12 wounds on a three up save and a six up ward, um, which is pretty tanky. And now I have a monstrous rampage in my army. Uh, he is Mark of Nurgle, so with a heroic action he can turn off wards. The Demonic Axe now has seven attacks at Ren 2 2 damage, which is decent. Um, I thought about Trophy Rack, but I have Wings for now just because it's nice to have another thing that's very fast. And then for Nullstone Adornments, um, I have the Pouch of Null Dust. I was thinking about this yesterday, and I think I'm convinced in my head that the Polished Pebble um, is actually better. So the Pebble is the one that you can dispel like a wizard, and if you succeed in their first dispel, you can keep dispelling until you fail, or unbinding. You can keep on unbinding until you fail. Um, and I think that's just straight better than the Pouch, actually, especially with Primals, because... The pouch is one turn, and instead of double ones being a miscast, you're making double ones, twos, or threes be a miscast. So on two dice, you're essentially saying, instead of a one in 36 chance, you have a one in 12 chance of miscasting on two dice. Um, and that's once per game. So in terms of stopping like a magic down tactic, that's not very impactful uh, versus just having the chance to unbind. And of course, you can always take the heroic action to unbind on the turn that they take Magic Dom if you happen to be in range. Um, but I think just having the chance to roll dice and stop spells is better than the once per game maybe make you miscast. Um, in the game I played against my friend Nick, um, I popped this on some turn and he cast three times. He didn't miscast at all. Like It had, had no effect. It didn't even really deter him from... I can't. Uh, didn't even really deter him from his casting. He still just cast the stuff that he wanted. Um, of course, it, it on an important turn, it could prevent throwing primals at something. Like, if somebody's trying to get off a blizzard, it suddenly makes that way scarier to, like, hit a primal misguest. Um, but I may last minute switch this before the tournament tomorrow to the pebble. We will see. Uh, so yeah, then the units. I have 10 chosen of Slanesh with the banner, because they're amazing and fantastic. Um, I would love the Chaos Lord to be, the, the Karkadrak Lord to be Korn or Nurgle, but I do need somebody who's Slanesh to give them the run and charge command to make them speedy. Um, so for now, Karkadrak is staying Slanesh. It, I can, I can, I could see that end up not being that necessary or impactful, the, the command to make them run and charge. Um... I'm going to see how the games play out. Like, I may end up switching the Karkadrak, like, back to Nurgle or something. Uh, but then it's 10 Chaos Knights of Nurgle with the minus one Ren banner, which are just amazing. They're fast. They're 30 wounds on a three up, five up board versus mortals. It's just this big block that's you can get to wherever I want to go and block things up, and it's great. Um, Corvus Cabal, having one deep strike thing is amazing. Uh, 10 Warriors of Nurgle. I was, I was a little skeptical of this, but... I think 10 Nurgle Warriors actually seems amazing to have <laughs> it, it, so far. Um, they're really good. It's, I mean, it's 180 points, but if you're kind of treating it like a screen, it's like the toughest screen you could possibly get, and they can actually dish out a little bit of damage. Um, then I have a Chariot of Nurgle, just because I wanted to try one, because I had been toying around with lists that had like five of them, and I was like, let's see if they're actually good before I buy five of them and paint them. Uh, then I have a Cockatrice, Allied in Beast of Chaos, and then I have six Theradons of Corn. Um, so the Cockatrice is there to basically stand either behind the... two things. Stand either behind the Theradons or the Chosen and keep them safe-ish. Safer, you know. You have to roll the four up to do wounds and make the enemy hit on sixes, but the threat is there that somebody could go into the the Chosen of the Theradons and not do anything to them because of the Cockatrice. Um, or if I have like the momentum and, and priority and stuff, it's you know, I can go into them and ruin their hit back as well. Um, and then the Cockatrice is also very fast. So the Cockatrice also moves 12 and flies just like the Demon Prince. Um, the Chariot moves 12, the Knights are 10, of course the Corvus Cabal can drop down. Um, so I actually, I, I feel like I have a decent, um, I have decent ways to get, like, surround and destroy, which is very important. Um, 
And yeah, the Therodons just hit like a truck. So as long as they stay alive and get into something, they will just destroy it and pick it up probably. Um, my experience so far is that I'm bad at that and I keep getting them charged and they'll like, you know, it's 30 wounds there. It's, it's a big chunk of wounds and I find that people will kill most of them and like the two left will strike back and do a bunch of damage and what have you. But I just, I need to be a little bit better about screening them out with either the warriors or the knights or the chariot um, and being careful about like getting doubled, um, which is something I'm always bad at. So that is the list. Um, as I said, a couple minor tweaks I might make. I'm going to do a little more practice with the Corn Theradons, but I may end up switching them to Nurgle, just so that if they do get charged, they're a little bit tankier and have the chance to hit back with their ridiculous profile. Um, so the game against Nick uh, was really fun. He played the Nurgle, like, Glotkin big monster list that has been around lately. Um, one unit of play bearers, two beasts, um, Orgot, Bloab, Glotkin, and an unclean one, great unclean one. Um, so this picture is from uh, bottom right. So I was less drops than him. I took first. This was on lines of communication. Lines of communication. Yes, it's right on there. Um, we totally forgot half the time to disrupt each other's phases, but we were... <laughs> so whatever. Um, it's a good battle plan. I like it. Uh, but I took first so that I could drop the Corvus Cabal. Um, I should show one second. I should show my mouse. There we go. Hey, there we go. All right. So I took first so that I could drop the Corvus Cabal next to his um, Veculent Naramal, I think it's called, whatever, the tree um, in his territory so that I could deny him a summoning point first turn and stop him from getting the Sopity Vile Piper out first turn. Uh, and then I was hoping I didn't get doubled. So I was hoping that that would get me potentially a turn without the Sloppity on the field so that I didn't have to worry about um, the no pylons thing. Um, so yeah, I took first, I did surround and destroy. So this is where having some fast things came in nicely. I got the chariot. Oh, I'm, I can't tell. I think I messed up. There we go. I messed up the screen recording slightly. There we go. Um, right. So the chariot ran off to the left here. The Karkadrak ran off to the right to get surrounded, destroy. And then to get five points, I moved the warriors up and then the Theradons up here. Um, I think this was a little, this was a little silly. I think I just, I deployed slightly poorly. I think I should have had the knights where the Theradons are to go take that point because they're tanky. And this is, the Theradons are really what I want charging into things. Uh, but you can see I held back the Demon Prince was the back edge thing for Surrounded to Destroy. Um, and then the Knights held back because I didn't want to, if he got the double, I wanted to, I wanted to say far enough away that if he got the double, I didn't get charged by the Glotkin and the Great Unclean one. Um, so I kept the Knights back because they hit much harder on the charge. Um, so his turn one, he just moved up onto the points and did magic dominance and got his five points. So it was five, five at this point. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory, nothing too exciting. Then turn two, he did win the double. Um, so I popped Naldos that turn and that's the turn he cast everything anyway. Um, I did do the heroic action to dispel that turn and dispelled one of his um, spells. And this is kind of why I'm thinking that the, the pebble's better than the, the stupid pouch. Um, he got to exactly seven points to summon the Sloppity there. And then he also, um, he charged Orgots into this chariot down here. Um, he, I believe he also that turn, let's see, I have a picture for end of two. Right, so that turn he also, um, these play bearers made like, I think they rolled a 12 for their charge. So he was able to send one to tag the Theradons just barely. And then he was able to like completely wrap around this wall here and block things up um, for the knights going in 
to kind of block things up um, to get to like the great unclean one and the um, Glotkin. Especially since I'm like trying to stay outside of 12 of the Glotkin. That's kind of the main thing um, to not get countercharged. So let's see. Right, so end of turn two. Um, this is end of turn two. My two, I. Um, he did Intimidate. I think I did charge with three Slaves to Darkness things, which is great. And then I used the Demon Prince Heroic to turn off wards. And I was hoping I would go in and clear all of the Plague Bearers um, with the Knights, which was, it turned out, ambitious, a little too ambitious. Um, so yeah, you can see the Demon Prince tagged the Plague Bearers, at least, because there was a Plague Bearer kind of here in the middle. Um, and then the Knights got in such that I got one, two, three, four, five. I, I got like seven Knight attacks in with the way it worked out. Um, and I also charged the... I got a charge off from the um, Warriors into the Glockin, I believe. So that was my three, was the Demon Prince, the Knights, and the Warriors. Um, he, I believe he tried to countercharge with the Glotkin and rolled too low and failed, if I'm remembering right. Um, so the issue here was, even with turning off the Plague Bearer's Ward saves, I only killed five of them with the Knights, and um, also, unfortunately, I couldn't, you know, I can't pile in because of Sloppity, so after the Knights went, the Demon Prince is out of range of his attacks and couldn't attack because of the way he pulled. And same with the um, same with the Theradons. Like, the Theradons couldn't attack either. So Sloppity is just such a pain in the ass. I hate it. Um, so we both got five points again. What is this picture? This looks like the same thing. Oh, this was before combat. So this was after I charged. You can see how the Plague Bearers are blocking everything up and like tagging stuff over here, and it was all very annoying. I did stay outside of three of the Great Unclean one. Uh, <clears throat> so that was, um, that was end of turn two. Turn three, he won priority. He did lead in, finest hour on the Glotkin. Um, the Great Unclean one did eight damage to the Knights that turn with his shooting attack, which I was like, First of all, the Green and Clean one has a shooting attack, okay. And second of all, he did eight damage to Chaos Knights. Like, excuse me, did not expect that. Um, so yeah, he, he got that tactic. Um, nothing too exciting happened that turn. Um, I then did Bait and Trap. Um, what happened? Ah, oh, right, he... The, the, Glotkin, um, the Glotkin ability to make the enemy retreat if they fail a um, bravery check. I did fail on the Warriors, so the Warriors had to retreat from the Glotkin, so he was free to do Blightkrieg, and uh, I believe I failed my tactic that turn. So I think I, th I, think I failed Bait and Trap um, that turn. I can see a 10 over there. I don't know what my score was. Um, well, yeah, the uh, things were things were kind of doing damage for me. Um, Orgot got into the Theradon, like everything here got into the Theradons and mostly killed them. Um, I think I did the, I think the Cactri succeeded in making Orgots hit on sixes, but then he rolled like a bunch of sixes to hit. Uh, the dice were like super swinging on both of our ends this game. Like we were both making like, like he either was rolling double ones or like a twelve to charge. He rolled multiple. I think he rolled like under. a he rolled a three or two to charge like three times, um, so it was a weird game. Uh, I should mention the Corvus Cabal were just sitting next to the tree and like taking mortal wounds from disease every turn until they finally were dead, but just preventing summoning points. Um, so yeah, turn four I did let in to the Maelstrom. I killed the Glotkin with the uh, Chosen and the Karkadrak. I think I had to double activate with the Chosen to kill him. Um, and then the thing that made me really sad is I, <sighs> what happened? I think after, 
Oh, I think I thought I could get both the Glockin and the Unclean one with the double fight, potentially, and then a charge from the Knights. Um, but I got the Glockin. Um, the Knights had cleaned up the Plague Bearers at this point and got a charge off onto the Unclean one. And I also... I charged in the Demon Prince with turning off the ward on the Unclean one as well. And my Charging Knights did zero wounds to the Unclean one. I think average, I was, I based on how many wounds he had, I should have picked it up, and I did zero wounds. So that was painful. Um, turn four, he did glory to the grandfather and got it. Um, in his turn, I got the great unclean one. He got the demon prince and the cockatrice. So then I won the roll off for turn five, which was good. And I got five points with intimidate the invaders. Um, so you can see at this point, there's not a whole lot left for him to do. I just kind of blocked off this point with knights and chosen were sitting there. So I had these two points. Um, I don't think there was really a way for him to... Yeah, he, he didn't have a tactic to do turn five. Um, and then we both failed our grand strat because I, I couldn't kill Bloab um, at this point uh, in turn five. Um, so... I ended up winning 23 to 19. Uh, so it was a close game, it was a good game. Uh, it was very good to practice against that interesting um, uh, Nurgle list. Um, of course, now Sloppity doesn't prevent pylons, so that practice was a little less relevant. Um, it's still a cool list, but way, way less burden <laughs> on the opponent to, to think about both the counter charge and the no pylons thing. Like, the counter charge from Glotkin is enough to think about. My brain was hurting so badly <laughs> in this game. Um, yeah, it was a good game. I was happy with the way the list performed. And like I said, I, I made one tweak. I might make one or two little more tweaks before tomorrow's RTT in Westminster. Um, this is, of course, at Tables and Towers in Westminster. Great venue. Um, a lot of good people going to be there, as there always are. So, you know, it's, it's like my local tournament scene and you've got you know, Bill Hennessy, Caleb's always there, Jacob is there, um, Corey Wiggins, who is my my new nemesis because he keeps beating me, is there. So he's, yeah, Corey. Dang you, Corey. He's beaten my, my Stormcast. Wait, no, he's beaten my Cruel Boys and he's beaten me with my OBR. So I got to beat him with the Slaves. Um, yeah, just a lot of a lot of people there, and a lot of people I am like friends with are going to be there tomorrow as well, like Travis Roth, Nick Jackson, Jacob. Um, I mean, all the Knights of the Pond, <laughs> like all those guys. So it should be good, uh, and I will make a video after I'm back from that. So yeah, thanks for listening.